And I think for us, it's so different because we're light skinned. You're not treated as a black woman. Duchess of Sussex, Meghan Markle, just learned what it's like to be treated as a, mistreated, I should say, as a black woman in America. Let's talk about it. Okay. Oh, what's up, y'all? I'm Sandra. Y'all know what it is. Let's get into it. Welcome to the channel. All that. Subscribe. All that good stuff. But let's talk about it. So, as you guys know, me you may or may not know, okay, Meghan Markle, she is an, a biracial, that's important, American actress um, who is now married to Prince Harry. Did I get all that right? All right, because I'm going to be keep, keeping up with the celebrities like that. But I think I got that part right. So she's saying she has a podcast. She has a, a black Jamaican mother and a white father. Um, she has a podcast, I think called The Archetype or The Archetypes. I'm not sure. I think it's Archetypes. Um, she has a podcast and she interviewed Mariah Carey and where she discussed and you know, since this whole thing with marrying Prince Harry, she has gone through a lot with the royal family and their fans and the kingdom and England. Since getting into the royal family, she has been going through a lot. She really has been feeling the pressure because the kingdom and all the rest, and I mean the royal family and everybody else, did not want a commonly known black person uh, marrying their precious white Harry. And so a lot of people were up in arms, particularly white people who are racist, well, let's call them what, what they are because I'm not protecting anybody. Because if you have a problem of some with someone because they are black, that makes you a racist, period, point blank. So yeah, um, she had an interview with Mariah Carey where she was discussing that until she started dating and was about to marry her now husband, Harry, she never knew what it felt like to be mistreated I'm gonna say mistreated as a black woman and I think for us it's so different because we're light-skinned you're not treated as a black woman you're not treated as a right. white woman you sort of fit in between I mean if there's any time in my life that it's been more focused on my race it's only once I started dating my husband then I started Obviously. to understand what it was like to be treated like a black woman because up until then I had been treated like a mixed woman and things really shifted I didn't fit in. I didn't fit in. You know, it would be more of the black area of town or then you could be where my mom chose to live were the more the white neighborhoods. And I didn't fit in anywhere at all. You were so formative for me. Representation matters so much. But when you are a woman and you don't see a woman who looks like you somewhere, in a position of power or influence, or even just on the screen, because we know how influential media is, you came onto the scene, it's like, oh my gosh, someone, someone kind of looks like me. Because as we know, Megan's phenotype is that of a white woman from the hair and skin color, skin tone. If you see her down the street, and I'm gonna get into why this is a very complex issue when it comes to being mixed or being light skinned or having certain phenotypes presenting to American society particularly. Because yes, she's considered black in America, but in a lot of places she is not. But like I was saying, as we know, Megan has a certain archetype, right? I mean, phenotype, that she looks and presents a certain way. If you see her down the street, that's a white woman. Let's be for real about it. Even I don't keep up with Megan like that. I never really knew who she was. I still don't know who she truly is because I saw Suits. Is that the show? Um, she was. I think that's what she's most famous for is the show Suits. And I saw it. And even in the show, that is not a black woman. I mean, she does um, talk about being mixed in the show, presents as a mixed woman. But if you walk past Megan, as I was saying, down the street, or you walk in a cafe, anywhere you meet Megan, and then she divulged divulge that information, you wouldn't know that this is a quote unquote black woman. Same for Mariah Carey. Come on, she's white presenting what is considered to be a white woman in America blonde hair <laughs> I mean I'm not trying to call them out in a negative light but I'm saying let's have an honest conversation about race skin color skin texture hair color hair texture when it comes to what is considered to be black in America we're going to discuss all this information right 
so again she was saying to Mariah, Mariah Carey, much as much like herself, she was basically relating to Mariah Carey, saying, "You and I, yes, we are biracial, which and mixed with black. However, we are not black or mixed presenting. So our treatments and our movements through society are different than that of a heavily melanated presenting woman who is considered to be." black in America. A lot of people were upset with what Megan said because they thought, oh, how dare you? You were supposed to be black. A lot of people considered her, oh my gosh, this is the black princess. And I bet you, I can guarantee you, Megan never thought of herself as a black princess. Okay, maybe now it's been forced down her throat. I, not to negate her experience and or the fact that she is aware of how black women are treated, we're going to discuss that also, but let's be real. I guarantee you, Meghan Markle never thought of herself as, oh, I'm a black woman. I'm going to be the first black princess. She has been allowed to move through society pr pretty fluidly without having to, having to deal with barriers and obstacles that would, um, <laughs> I'm trying to say, that would kind of harden her experience. I also want to make the point that preferential treatment in society is not solely on the basis of being white or mixed. I want to reinforce that the uh, ideology is that the lighter your skin tone is, even if you have two black parents, the lighter your skin tone is, the more your hair type not only looks like white, quote unquote, white hair, as long as it does not resemble what is considered to be black hair then your treatment in society changes significantly and you get better treatment automatically versus someone who is completely dark skinned and have what is considered to be black textured hair i really want this point to be understood i'm sure her not being black presenting but while also being considered black offered her a lot of opportunities with companies that want to say that they are diverse without having to be diverse and not having to actually hire someone who's visually considered what is considered to be black and i'm saying what is considered to be black because blackness is different outside of america i want americans to truly understand that in my country i am from haiti I am I am black right but I could be standing to someone who is darker than me okay in my country I am black I have cousins who are lighter skinned and I have cousins who are darker skinned skin color right more melanated or less melanated okay whatever my mom is less melanated she in my country they would refer to her as red like her skin tone is not black not that we don't know that we're black not that we don't love being black not that we don't embrace blackness but we describe people in my country as what is visually available for example if Meghan Markle walked somewhere in Haiti they were asking you to describe her they would say you know somebody red or a white woman because that's what the skin tone is presenting what is considered to be white but in america as long as you have any drop there's that one drop rule right um as long as you have one drop of blackness in you then you are considered to be black let me tell you america what is is and was more two races for the nazis when the nazis came to america uh, because they wanted to you know go worldwide right um they they were doing their thing seeing how black people are treated yeah that's where they belong that's how they belong but the night nazis came across the rule of the one drop rule and they were like these motherfuckers are really crazy one drop rule if you have one drop then man y'all two y'all two racist for me so imagine america being too racist for the nazis let that marinate let that marinate okay so Meghan Markle is considered a black woman in America in Brazil she would not be in Haiti she would not be does that mean that doesn't mean she doesn't belong um, to the black race 
but it's all about visual appearance. So the fact that she has been able to maneuver through society in America as a white woman, and I'm sure she took full advantage of that, right? The fact that she's able to, because she was hanging out with Piers Morgan, right? And he doesn't like black people. Um, he's overtly racist, but he could hang out with Megan because she's not black, right? Yeah, she's black, but she's not black. You know what I mean? So there is this co um, this cognitive disassociation of skin color, hair color, hair texture, and blackness. So the qualifications for blackness are different. For example, Bob Ross. I was watching his documentary last night. Bob Ross, right? He was a white man, as white as they come. But I used to watch him when I was younger because I've always wanted to learn how to paint um, and draw and stuff like that, right? But he was a white man with an afro. That made him ambiguous. I, at that time, I was never thinking about race because thankfully I hadn't grown up in America where race was a in-your-face thing. I guarantee you America is literally the most racist country on the planet, okay? So thankfully for me, I did. I hadn't grown up in America at that time. So race, of course I know about, like, don't get me wrong. I know about white people, black people. We have, I remember in school learning the black race, the red race, the, the white race. I know, I know it sounds funny, but red is actually considered a race or, you know, a lineage of, to identify people in Haiti. So when I was watching him, I never thought anything about it, but he it, he was racially ambiguous. Why? Because he had an afro. So think about it, that the hair texture actually plays a role, a key role in identifying somebody, in determining their race, in determining what they look like, in determining um, how literally they are treated. Okay? So a literal white man can look like how he looks but once he puts on an afro it's like oh is he or isn't he and megan had that advantage there because not only there are a lot of mixed people that look that are as light or un <laughs> i don't want to say melanin deficient but as megan right that don't have that much melanin however those people Excuse me. However, those people can still um, have it. Those people, because of their hair texture, they have curly hair, or they have more of um, Western, West African textured hair. Um, the most popular type of West African textured hair, because there are different types, right? Um, Megan had what is considered to be presenting like you know a non-black person because she could be Latina. And mind you, being Latina is not a race. See what I mean? Um, so, but she could be anything, but she is not black presenting. Now, I want to make this clear. I don't want to take away from anything away from Megan and her experience. I did see some videos of her where she actually speaks against racism. She's actually witnessed um, her mother being called the N-word. And I was called, I've been called the N-word. And until I came to America, this was never even a thing. I'm telling you, America is so stupid. But, you know, and she's actually spoken up against it. She's actually talked about her privilege that she acknowledges, hey, I know I look like this and I know this makes it easier for me to be accepted in American culture and in white culture particularly. And I'm sure she, I don't know who she was married to. I know she was married before. I don't know if he's white or anything. I wouldn't be surprised that she dated white or non-black men, okay? So I'm sure she never had felt the pressure of not being wanted feeling made to feel unwelcome made to feel like you're less than let me clarify black women are not undeserving we are literally the most popping nobody and i say nobody compares to black women i want to make that clear no matter what people say no matter how they try to make us feel and they try to emulate us you know when they're talking or when they wanted everything else let's be very clear we are, we are the prototype. We are the blueprint. 
let's be clear about that however Megan has actually spoken I mean she never has never felt what it's like to what I can't come here because of my skin color or you don't approve of me because of my skin color or it's not even her skin color that's the funny thing right so then what is race is it skin color is it hair type is it hair color is it hair texture is it phenotype because it's not or is it just the fact that you are a product of somebody from such a race now we do not accept descendants of such a race because black women we carry what's called the eve gene i carry the gene where i literally can reproduce any type of existing human looking person in the world that no one else has that gene i can me with anybody with a black man a non-black man I, as a black woman, have a gene where I can reproduce a child who that looks completely Asian as far as like phen phenotypes and features, um, a child who that completely what is considered to be white, a child that's considered to be looking um, Native American, whatever. I have that gene. So I'm sure the royal family knows this. As a black woman, you get your um, eggs from your mother right and her mother is black so there is even though megan is white presenting there is a real possibility that she could have a child who is black presenting and they did they don't want any part of that they know that and like i said when you take actors like mariah carey a bunch of mixed people who don't look as what is considered to be black in america um they get farther in life that's the reality and we have to be honest about that and zendaya actresses like zendaya i'm sure she's talented um but let's not negate the fact that zendaya is a white presenting woman as one that is super thin what they look for as far as representation of the ideal white woman is supposed to look like that you're not you don't have to be that skinny that's not what i'm saying but we know american culture has always valued that they have never truly appreciated curves and you know fullness on different women especially the women's that the women that are the archetype for that body type which are mostly mel heavily melanated women so like i was saying zendaya she's super talented but she's had a lot of opportunities because of the fact that despite the fact that she's quote unquote black she's not black presenting to the world zendaya herself has spoken about this she has acknowledged this her privilege she has said that um she has declined roles that are de uh, designed for darker skinned women that that have been offered to her so imagine that chris rock had to fight for them to make his mother black on the show imagine chris rock who is what is considered to be black presenting having to fight for him to get his mother a black mother like his mother is black but they want to hire a lighter skin person Issa ray um awkward black girl she was making the show insecure they wanted her to have um one of my favorite people um Lauren, Lauren London. I love Lauren London, but um, let's acknowledge, despite despite the fact that she's considered to be black, she is a very light-skinned woman. And this society, particularly in America, really focuses on literally hair texture and skin color. I'm not negating the fact that racism um, exists outside of America and worldwide but I'm saying it's more prominent and prevalent in America for a country that is supposed to be so heavily diverse for example countries Asian countries right when black people are there they treat you like you're a spectacle they want to inspect you because you're like a foreign object and which is really racist and disrespectful but in those countries there aren't, aren't as many different people right not on TV not in person so they're intrigued that's not to justify it but I'm saying for a country that's supposed to be so advanced for a country that's supposed to be better more tolerant there isn't such an America still remains fundamentally 
racist on purpose. So, like I was saying, I know um, I'm not trying to take away from any of lighter skin tone women, but we need to have an uh, a real conversation because it really bothers me when, and I'm not saying that they're not black or anything like that, but I'm saying someone like me, I am black, but in some places, if I were to be described, they're not going to say, oh, a woman, a black woman, they, they would say, oh, she's a brown skinned woman. If someone is actually black or much darker to what people consider black, they're like, oh yeah, she's black. Oh, she's a red woman. Or there's a term we say clear woman, but not clear, but just means lighter woman in my country. So blackness is sub is subjective um, worldwide. And Megan, I keep wanting to say Megan this time, just learn. So instead of being upset with her, let's really, I encourage, I would love to encourage conversations like this because then it opens the possibility for change, right? For progress, for doing something about it. Because yeah, the truth is heavily melanated women do not get the same treatment and opportunities as other women do. And I'm so, I'm kind of glad that she even spoke about it because she's comfortable enough to talk about it because a lot of people wouldn't, don't even want to acknowledge their privilege because they think, oh, that's taken away from my hard work or my talent. But no, that's not true. You are still talented. There are other talented people who were negated because of the fact that they don't present as what um, racist America want them to present to. Anyway, you guys, I, I know I didn't want to make this video too long, but let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Make sure um, you follow me on uh, Sandra Said What. I will, I don't know, I will talk to you soon, and I hope you guys are well. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.